Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take just a moment and talk about objects. We've seen objects. We've seen them many times at this point. In fact, we've already pointed out that C-sharp is an object-oriented language, and everything that you deal with within C-sharp is indeed an object. Now, there's something that I want you to become a little bit more comfortable with. While this is not going to be a full-blown object-oriented lesson, as a matter of fact, this isn't going to cover... Well, most anything from the world of object-oriented programming. That's going to be coming up in Volume 2 of the XNA Extreme class. I just want you to become familiar with the keyword new and what's happening when you actually create an object from a class. You've seen this. You have seen such cool things as new rooms. How about new item? Remember these from Hyperion? All right, so that's way back then. How about something more recent? How about from Canon 1, you saw new point. Of course, I'm not writing out all the code. I'm just showing you the keyword and where we were creating an object of a particular class type. How about new, I know, this was a good one, random. Or wait, there was another one, new, new size. We saw that too. All right, so all of these you have seen, but what are you actually doing? You are creating a new object from a class. What does that mean? Well, let me show it to you. I'm going to break this down with a very simple class. We're going to make a class called person, and it's going to be like a person factory. Basically, it's going to be like a blueprint for a person, and through the keyword new, we'll be able to pump out as many people as we want. So we're going to create a class in just a few minutes inside of Visual Studio to show you this. We're going to make a class called person. Okay, and person is going to contain some information. Keep this in mind. What is an object? Well, basically, an object is just an encapsulation of data and functionality. So you could say an object contains state and behavior. Okay, that is what an object is. So in our particular case for person, what kind of information do we want to encapsulate inside each person object that we create? How about a name? How about an age? And how about a profession? Let's give it some behavior. What kind of behavior can we give person? And again, I want to keep this very simple. So how about something like identify? Okay, so identify is actual functionality. It's a method. What is it going to do for us? Well, it is going to spit out on our console screen something along the lines of, hi, my name is, and now what I want it to do is utilize it's data that it has encapsulated within each object. So let's just say, for instance, I have a Bob character who's 28 years old and he's a mechanic. So I want to identify to say, hi, my name is Bob. I am a 28-year-old mechanic. So that's what I want to be able to do. So here we are with our class. So this is our class. And think of a class as a blueprint. for an actual object. So from this class, I can derive some objects. So let's say we create one where it's Bob. Like I said a second ago, and he was what? He was a 28-year-old mechanic. And how about I make another object And this one, uh, let's say Mary. And Mary's going to make her a little bit older. She's a 36-year-old nurse. All right, that sounds good. So at this point, we have two completely different objects based off of the class person. So what type are these? It is a type person. What type is this? a person. And let me put the end in there before I go running away. We used our blueprints for 
coming up with the actual objects. Now, how do we do something like this in code? Well, you've seen us put together classes, and you're going to see us put together a class again, but this is where I want to actually fun function. <laughs> I want to actually focus on the creation of this object. So let's say we've got the class already defined, right? Now, how do we make an object from that class? Well, you guys have seen when you want to create a variable, what do you do? You first, in the declaration line, say what type of information it's going to hold. So here's an integer. What type of information will an integer variable hold? Integer values, whole numbers. So let's say int x, terminator. So what do we have here? We have our type, and then we have our variable name. Okay. Now, same exact thing applies when I want to create a new object. I've got to hold a reference to that object in a variable. So to declare the variable, I first must start out with the variable's type. What type will a person be? It will be a person. Check it out. How cool is that person? Person. Now I have to give it a variable name. So let's see. Person. Something that makes sense. Well, we're going to create Bob. How about we call him Bob? Da-da. There we go. Now what have we done? We have just created a variable that is going to hold a reference to Bob, our object, that we are going to create in a moment. But at this point, where does the variable point to? Now, check this out. Let me come over here. Remember way back in variables, and I did a box, and I said this variable is x, so let's just draw a box and put an x on it. And then we could come in here and actually put a value in it. Well, now what have we done? We have created a, as soon as I find my pen, there we go. We have created a person variable, but a person variable is going to point to the actual object when the object gets created. And this gets into a methodology that we're going to be studying in Volume 2. So it's not like we're actually cramming that object into person, the variable that we just created. As a matter of fact, let me correct this. That reads wrong. Let me put Bob here. Here, I'm getting so carried away. Bob. Because we had X up here. Need to have Bob right here. Logan, you should have caught me on that. Okay, <laughs> so we've got Bob. Bob is holding a, he's of type person, okay? So I could get away with doing this to make it a little bit more accurate looking. We could say this is of type int, and this is of type person. But this is pointing to a, it's basically pointing to a reference of. It is, it's referencing Bob, the actual object. That's what it's doing, as opposed to holding Bob in him. So keep that in mind. So at this point, we have defined up here. As a matter of fact, let me switch this over to a pointer real quick. We have actually defined the variable Bob, and he's going to be pointing to an object of type person. But at the moment, where is he pointing to? Well, at the moment, nowhere. We have not yet created the object for us to point to. So this right here does not exist. We don't have that pointing action taken place yet. So how do we make that happen? Well, we need to actually create a new person. Well, how do we create a new person? Uh -huh. How do we create a new person? There we go. So to do that, it's really quite simple. All we need to do now is say Bob is equal to a new person. Boom, boom, and there you go. You have seen this before in such wonderful things as new point, new size, new random, new room. Now, hopefully, you have a little bit better of an idea of what is happening because now I can take these two little hash marks out because we are indeed pointing to Bob. But at the moment, Bob doesn't contain any for any information. So it's kind of like we've just created a person with no identity. So let's give Bob an identity. At this point, we now can actually do this. Bob dot name. And we can do this because we are going to stipulate that these data members are public. Again, like I said, I want to keep this class 
person. Very simple. So we're not going to worry about setting up properties or anything like that. We're just going to put in three public data members and one method, okay? One public method. So now bob.name is equal to bob. Bob.age. Well, let me go ahead and use my same. So there we go. Same, my same casing. So Bob.age equals, well, Bob's 28. And Bob's profession Bob's profession is a mechanic. All right, so now at this point, we could call upon Bob to identify himself. We have set the state, and we'll push state and behavior a little bit more later on, but we have set the state of Bob right here. And now we can call upon some behavior that Bob has by saying Bob dot identify. At which point, Bob's going to say, hi, my name is Bob. I'm a 28-year-old mechanic. Ta-da. Quite simple. So here we have created. Let me go ahead and grab a pointer real quick. We have created the variable Bob that is of type person. It is after we did the new line. Bob then points to a object, an object that exists I don't want to get too fancy yet. We'll save that for the object-oriented lessons. That exists out there. Okay, so he's now pointing to this object. We then come in here and set the state of Bob by setting his name, age, and profession. So we now have some data encapsulated inside our object. Sweet. And then we call upon some of Bob's behavior. Actually, the only thing Bob knows how to do. He's not a very good mechanic, I guess. All he can do is identify himself. And then he does just that. He regurgitates this information that is being contained within the object through a simple console write line that we will give to Bob's identity, or excuse me, identify method. So very, very simple. I hope you see it as being simple. If we want to turn around and create Mary, well, what are we going to have to do? We're going to need to create another person who is going to be called Mary. And then we need to actually create Mary. Because Mary is just the variable that's not pointing to the actual object yet. So we have to use new person. So Mary's a new person. Boy, I bet she's happy. And then once again, we can set her state by setting her data members and then call on some functionality. In her case, identify. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what's actually going on when you create a class and then you derive an object from that class. Why is all this so important? Well, in the very next video, the first thing we're going to do is create a game item class. And from game item, we shall derive such objects as player. How about, uh, let's see, what else are we going to have? Projectile, target. So you get the idea. So you're going to see things along the lines of game item, player. Well, let's try not to hit that button over there, if I can. So player. And then you'll see things like player equals a new game item. Am I doing a good job of pushing that new word, Logan? Well, uh, it's certainly important because if you're used to working with simple variables, it could become a, a habit to just define and then turn around and immediately use the variable. Right. And in the case of a class, if you try to immediately use a reference that doesn't exist, then you'll get problems. You got it. So I can't just say, person Bob. Bob dot name equals, <laughs> excuse me, Bob doesn't exist yet. All we have is a variable. So... Coming up very soon, in the next video, as a matter of fact, we're going to be creating the class game item, and we're going to be deriving objects from game item, player, projectile, etc. So you're going to see things 
just like I have drawn right here inside this box. So that is why I wanted to have this video. I wanted you to understand what is going on. You've seen this before. I know you've seen it. But I need you to understand what's truly happening when I say new. At least have a basic understanding that, ah, he's now actually creating a new instance of that class. He's creating an object. Gotcha. Very cool indeed. I like it. So, Logan, now that we've got this drawn up, if I can get you to turn your attention over to Microsoft Visual Studio, sir. Let us create a very simple console app. All right, let's make a new project, a console application. Now we shall begin off, my good friend, by creating a simple class. All right, well, we can come over to the project, add a new item, and make sure that class is selected, and call the class, let's see, we've been working on with person, so we'll make a person class. All right, there's our person class. Okay, and now within the person class, we're going to keep things simple. We shall have three data members. Right. They shall be public in nature because we need to be able to access them from outside of this class. All right, and see, the first one you had was name. name. All right, so we're going to need a public name is going to have letters and possibly numbers in it, so it will be a string, and it will be called name. Okay. All right, next. But, Logan, why are we using casing with a capital N? And why did I draw that back over on the whiteboard? Well, in this case, this is the public version of this of this thing. We don't have a property that we're going to use as an intermediary between the, the, uh, the actual data and what you see from outside of the class. So this data member becomes just a bit more important, huh? Right, because you're going to be looking at it in, if you want to call it an official sense, when you're looking at the person and you're looking at that person's actual name, then you want to... Uh, see that as a as a proper name then. That's right. All right. Next data item. This one will also be public. This time we're going to have age. Age is a number, so I'll store it as an integer. And of course, it's simply called age. Sounds good. And finally, we have a last public data member. This is the profession. We'll store it with words, so we'll store it as a string. And it is called uh, profession. All right. Fantastic. Now that we have our data members in place, let's go ahead and create our one public method, which is identify. Okay. So we've got a public method. It's not going to return anything, so it will be void. And it is called identify. Okay, now we can go ahead and add the functionality into the identify method. And if you recall, the functionality is going to be right out to the console, the following. Hi, my name is, and then use whatever data is being stored in the variable name. I am a, and then use whatever data is being stored in the variable age. Years old, and use whatever data is being stored in the variable profession. Okay, so writing out to the console. We'll grab uh, console. We'll tell it to write a line. And we'll tell it to write, hi, my name is, and then whatever is stored in the name. So I'll end these quotes, and we'll add on to concatenate the uh, name variable. Okay. And I need to finish off the quotes before I terminate. Next line. And that looks good. So we'll print out the rest of the information on another Oh, line. let's go ahead and put a period at the end of that. Let's make it look nice. Okay. So we'll concatenate to the end of that a simple period. And, of course, we're adding that into the string, so make sure that it is within double quotes. Now on the next line, we shall do another console.readline. And continuing on, we shall say I am a... And then a space and the quotes. We'll add on to that... Age. Age. And we'll add on... Year, old, and the quotes, and add on profession. And then let's put a period in there, so we'll add one more thing. All right, add on some more quotes, add the period, and then finish the parenthesis and terminate. And let's go ahead and build and make sure everything builds successfully. All right, some simple warnings. That is all good because nothing's being assigned and all that's blah, blah, blah. All warnings but no errors, so... I'm happy with it. Let's go ahead now and move back over into program, and we'll just jump down into our entry point within this application. Let's just keep this super simple for this example. Let's go ahead and create three people. So we can say person, and then let's go ahead and create Bob, Mary, and John. All right, Bob, and since these are all going to be the same thing, they're all going to be a person, we can create them all on the same line with comma, so Bob, comma, 
Mary. Just Emma, like we saw in the variables John. lesson. All right. All right. So this doesn't actually create the object, Bob, Mary, and John. This just sets up three variables that will allow us to hold a reference to objects of type person. So there's nothing in them yet. So now we need to create these objects. So let's create them. Okay. Let's begin with Bob. Let's say that Bob will hold or will refer to a new person. And then person has to be followed with um, parentheses, and we'll probably get into exactly we, we why in a, in, the in a later lesson. video. Yep. Okay. And so now Bob actually exists. Uh, we can go ahead and set Bob up real quick if you want. So okay. Bob's name is going to be... Well, Bob. That sounds good to me. It's going to be Jack, huh? <laughs> All right, Bob's age is going to be 28. And Bob's profession is, you lucky mechanic, you. Mechanic. All right, fantastic. Now let's just hit enter a couple of times. And now let's create Mary. All right. Say it. Mary is equal to a new person. All right. And Mary's name is Mary. She's a 36-year-old nurse from Brooklyn, been in the profession for the last 16 years. She's, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so age, 36, profession, nurse. She loves her job. And I'll keep this lowercase. Okay. And then finally, we can hit in her a couple of times. Let's go ahead and create John. All right. John is a... He's going to be a 21-year-old graphic designer. Person. been working with Maya for the last three years. has become quite proficient and has his eyes set on working at such great studios as Pixar, ILM, etc. All right. John dot... What did you say his age was? Ah, uh, let's say make him 21. He's a young guy. All right. 21 for age. And John's profession is a graphic artist? He's a graphic designer from Southern California. All right. So now that we have these all set up, at this point, let's go ahead and build. You'll see that everything builds fine. Good deal. You'll also notice all of our warnings went away because now everything's being used. Now if we drop down a couple of lines, let's call upon somebody to identify themselves. But before we actually do that, let's go ahead and make sure we have the app halt itself until it reads in a line so that we can see any sort of information that gets echoed out to the console. Okay. So let's do uh, console.readline. And that'll hold us up at the end. Sounds good. Now let's jump up a few lines. All right, so let's start out with Mary. We want Mary to identify herself. Okay, so we'll say, Mary, we'll call on identify. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, build and run. Hi, my name is Mary. I am a 36-year-old nurse. Yes, Mary, good job. Let's go ahead and jump out. Now let's... Uh, Change that. Uh, let's just, after Mary, let's go ahead and add uh, Bob. All right. He's dying to identify Bob himself. identify. And let's go and execute. And so, hi, my name is Mary. I'm a 36-year-old nurse. Hi, my name is Bob. I'm a 28-year-old mechanic. Starting to feel like some sort of, I don't know, professions meeting. <laughs> All right, let's close this. I've been in the profession for 26 years now, and uh, sit down. Okay. All right, so finally, just to show it's all working, let's go ahead and throw John in there, have John identify himself. And at this point, I'm hoping everybody is starting to see the key thing here. Go ahead and execute. And there we go at the end with, hi, my name is John. I'm a 21-year-old graphic designer. So what have we proven with this video? We have proven the following. If I come in here real quick. We have proven that we can create, if I grab a pointer here, a blueprint for an object. In this case, it was going to be a person that had three data members and one method. We were able to derive objects from that blueprint, from that class. 
Okay? When we created our objects, we had to have a variable that referenced our objects so that we could then access stuff inside of the objects. And we're going to go into that in much greater detail, again, in Volume 2 of the XNA Extreme class. But I just want you to see what's happening. So after showing you this here, we actually went up here and just kind of wrote it out, at least one person, before going over Individual Studio and designing it for real. But you saw when we create a variable, anytime we do it, we have to have a type and a variable name, that is part of the declaration, or that is all of the declaration. So the same thing applies when we're going to create a variable that's going to reference an object. We start off first by the type, and that is going to be the class name. And then we give it a meaningful variable name. In this case, Bob made sense because it's going to reference the person Bob. And then we needed to actually create Bob, okay? So Bob is equal to a new person. And that is where we established our reference to our new object. We then went in here and set the state of Bob by making him, well, have some data. We set his name to Bob, his age 28, his profession a mechanic, and then we called upon him to identify himself, and he did just that. The functionality that we specified within the identify method was called upon, and it worked. It echoed that information out to the console. So this is the idea of the video. Again, it's a very simple object primer, not going into all the specifics. We're not going into inheritance and encap. Well, there is some encapsulation going on right here, but we're not really talking about encapsulation. We're not talking about, oh, they're polymorphism. Oh, there's so many things for us to get into. But all of that is yet to come because I want to make sure all of that gets into the XNA Extreme class. But the reason that we covered all this is because, like I said, in the next video, we are going to be creating the game item class. And I want you guys completely, fully aware of how we're going to be generating these variables that are going to reference these game items as they get created. Okay? So with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.